there are three bite-sized truths that we that really need to be listened to. One, two, three. One is about what is an apostle. Another is what is a pastor. And another is what is an elder. This bite-sized truth is what is a pastor. Most church leaders these days are referred to as pastor. Now, what is one? Well, a pastor is like a shepherd whose responsibility it is to feed and look after the well-being of the flock. And he's there to bring protection to the church and the flock too. Pastors are a little bit like mothers in a family who love and care for the people and they are part of, uh, who are part of the church family. They have a caring, loving heart. Pastors also have a strong responsibility for shepherding, for leading, for guiding, protecting and making sure the local church is, is doing what it's supposed to do. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2 to 4, it says this, Be shepherds or elders of God's flock that is under your care as overseers or elders, not because you must, but because you are willing as God wants you to be, not greedy for money, that's the, not the motivation, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive a crown of glory that will never fade away. Pastors are to oversee the activities of the flock. That's their job as pastors. Pastors are to watch out for the spiritual health of the flock. Pastors are to guard the flock from all sorts of dangers and troublesome people who could bring harm and discord. That's why in Acts chapter 20, 28, 29, it says, keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers or pastors or elders. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. Savage wolves will come in from among you and not spare the flock. A good pastor will take good care of his sheep. He will also be diligent in feeding the flock. He will study and pray and counsel and preach and teach and hone his skills to be the most effective instrument in the hands of God to bring the church through to maturity and make disciples. A good pastor must be willing to lay down his life for the sheep, the Bible says. It will cost him time, effort, inconvenience, sometimes money, family time, and much more. And he's done that for me down many years. But that's what a good shepherd does when he's serving God. This is not a nine to five job. If you want a nine to five job, don't become a pastor. And if you're a pastor with that attitude, you need to change your heart. Each pastor will have a measure or a gifting and a calling. Pastors the best way for pastors to work is that they're part of a team led by, we refer to as being a set man or a senior pastor who leads that team. And the other pastors will then serve in unity with the vision and the heart of the set man. There's a clarity in that pattern. In our church, Destiny Church Wakefield, God has given us multiple pastors, each with special callings and giftings, they're not duplicates of one another. We have one heart, but we have different gifts and we work and function together under the vision of the set man or senior pastor. Pastors need wisdom to counsel. They need wisdom to bring, up the, to bring, over, to, to bring oversight to the church, but they also themselves need the oversight of apostolic ministry so that they're not isolated or vulnerable too. Pastors are called by God and only those who are called by God are truly pastors, although many others do try and look like pastors and they might even call themselves pastor, but unless they're the real thing, then they are not the real thing. Pastors are given an anointing to fulfill their calling, which makes them a specialist. Their anointing gives them insights into their ministry that others will not have. And they won't even understand until you know what the anointing is, the anointing that makes all the difference. It could be that a church member thinks that they know better than the pastor. And it's true that, well, in our church, we have many smart guys in our congregation. But it is the anointing and the calling that sets a true pastor apart from even the smartest guy out there and gives them a wisdom and an insight to know how ministry should happen within the church. They know they should know.
they'd been called and equipped to know. Often a shepherd is referred to as a door, and the idea is that nothing comes in and nothing goes out of the church unless it goes past the pastor. It's God's way of providing protection and responsibility for what happens in the sheepfold and is a very good safeguard. A pastor is much more than a social worker who's helping people through a tough time. They are God's appointed person to lead the church and therefore to lead people through their own tough times. And, uh, and because of that, we're asked, everybody's asked to respect and to submit to their leadership. Of course, a, a pastor should keep his life and his testimony good. 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 says, Now an overseer or a pastor must be above reproach, husband above one wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him with proper respect. He must not be a recent convert. He must have a good reputation with outsiders. That, those are really high standards indeed. But to be a pastor is a high calling. They represent God to the people. So they should be reaching towards these standards of life and of integrity and of maturity. So our key verse, as it is for this trilogy of teachings is Ephesians 4.11, that it is he, that is Christ, who gave some to be pastors, to be pre preparing God's people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach the unity of faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, becoming mature and attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So we're asking the question, what would Jesus do? What's, what's Jesus' take on the whole issue of pastors? Well, Jesus was the great example of being a shepherd. John 10, 11 says it so. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 25, it says, For you were all like sheep going astray, but now you've returned to the shepherd and the overseer of your souls. Jesus is the greatest shepherd ever, the greatest pastor. Jesus loved people like a pastor should. Jesus spent time talking with people and showing that he was interested in their lives. All sorts of people, like a pastor should. Jesus prayed for people, like a pastor should. Jesus taught the people, like a pastor should. Jesus made personal sacrifices for people, uh, like a pastor should. Jesus never rejected anybody, like a pastor should. Jesus helped people to rise up and be strong. He changed their lives like a pastor should. There is no greater example of being a shepherd, being a pastor, than Jesus. So what are the steps that we should take now? I suggest to you that you need to know who your shepherd is, who your pastor is, and appreciate them for their calling to care for you. Speak well of them. They're God's servants. When you know who they are, listen to your pastor. Realize that he's bringing the word of God to you. Because in Hebrews 13 verse 7 it says this, Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you and consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. You need to have a heart to respond to leadership. In fact, in Hebrews 13 verse 7 it says, Obey your leaders and submit to their authority. They're keeping watch over you as men who will give an account to God. And then pray for your pastors. They've got a difficult job and they're open to the attack of the enemy. So protect them with your prayers. Zechariah 13, 7, uh, 13, 7 says, strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. If you're part of a church family where you have a pastor or several, who you know is called by God and is serious about his ministry, then you are blessed indeed. If you're not in such a blessed situation, you should consider where you should be and you may need to make a decision to be part of a great family like Destiny Church Wakefield because it was God who called pastors for his purpose to train and equip people. And Without those people in your life, your, your life is going to live in deficit. But with them, you are going to be blessed indeed. So find your pastor, stay with him, pray for him, love him, 
support him, help him, and it will be for your benefit.